Hi everybody, my name is Paul Turner and I'm going to talk to you today a little bit from a perspective of a multi-dimensional healer. And I want to, with all the madness going on in the world, I thought what I'd do is talk a little bit about um, how to rise above the storm of oppression, how to get help people to come out of their feelings of being stressed and worried, to come to a perspective which helps them to look at life from a much more balanced perspective and come to a state of knowing. So we're going to look at how we can operate from the perspective of our divine selves rather than our personalities or our physical selves. So that's what I wanted to talk about. So to start with, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to basically, I'll talk about this little diagram and I'm going to draw things in as I go. And you could say that these several levels that I've drawn here represent seven different levels of consciousness and also seven different levels of vibrational matter. So I won't go through that now, I've done that in other, other discussions. But basically you've got the, the world as we know it divided up into seven different planes of vibration and also awareness. So we're most familiar with the physical and the emotional and the mental. So if we talk about this for a minute, so most people walking around in the world are walking around as personalities. So that means that they are, um, they have, we, we have a mind, we have feelings, emotions and we have a physical body and we're acting in the world from a perspective of that personality. That's where most people's consciousness is. And you could say that's a three-dimensional viewpoint of uh, how we look at the world. And then we're going to talk a little bit about this higher planes of being or consciousness as well, which I'll discuss as we get into it. But to start with, what's happening in people at the moment is there's quite a lot of um, feelings of anxiousness, people having trouble sleeping, there's a lot of real madness and insane mandates happening in the world. And we want to try and help us to come to a place where we can reason this through and work out, a, a, a come at it from a nice, more balanced perspective. So at the very start of last year with the, the pandemic, I was doing a little meditation and I got a bit of an impression or an image of what was happening in the world. So I got the, the idea of there was like a, um, it's like if here's the world here, Okay, I got the, the impression of it's a bit like a bomb has been dropped. Okay, so it's like a little mushroom cloud. There's a little bit of a bomb has been dropped. So I'll just scribble that in as, you know, in this level here. Okay, so it's a little bit like this little person that's operating from the physical world. So even though the people operate as personalities, most of our attention in the world is focused on the physical world. Physical science, physical learning, physical anatomy, how to operate in the world, run a business, all that sort of stuff. So even though we're operating on three different levels, primarily, we are focusing our attention mainly on the physical world. And the physical world is the world of effects. So when this sort of bomb was dropped with the pandemic and everything like that, my feeling was that it was related to, it's like a dark billowing cloud of, of darkness or smoke that relates, and the feeling was that it relates to materialism, it relates to mankind being out of synchronicity with nature, okay, and our own selves. And it's a bit like uh, it was related to fear, it was related to control, it was related to greed, and basically, it's humanity is a sense, in a sense, has got to a point where we're not being responsible for our own healing our own, and our own health. And we're not educated about what our multidimensional being is. So a lot of the time we're kept in ignorance because we don't really understand who we are as an as overall integrated being. And we get so focused on the, the physical world or the world of the personality, thoughts and feelings and, and actions, that we sort of don't even stop to question who we are. So we've got this sort of cloud of materialism and it was, it's driven basically by fear and control. Okay, so that's the real, if you could say, this is the real effect. But even though it's affecting us on a physical level, it's actually starting on what you might call a psychological level. So here we have a psychological cloud, if you like. It's like a storm cloud, okay, in the sky. And that storm cloud is starting, see, people operate from the intellect and from the emotions, and that people's beliefs and ideas are what's driving the, uh, our actions in the physical world. So the ideas and the, the cause, if you like, you could say this is to do with cause, and you could say this storm cloud is a storm cloud of negative, um, negative energy. Okay, And then the effect of that energy plays out in the physical world. 
But the image I got was like a storm cloud, more on a physical level. And this is physical man stuck in the cloud. And the natural tendency of humanity is to try and run away from the fear. So they try to get away. So a lot of people, for example, are thinking, oh, everything's gone mad. We want to try and get out of Victoria, for example. But the trouble is that cloud in my imagery, it's like here's the, the world and here's the energy around the world. The storm cloud is going around the world everywhere. It's everywhere. So you can try and run away from the, you know, the bomb being dropped. But it doesn't matter where you go, you're still going to be stuck in the cloud. Okay, you're still going to be stuck wherever you go because it's happening all around the world. And if you're stuck in the cloud of fear, it just keeps your consciousness down low, keeps you stuck in the muck, so to speak. Okay, so what the solution is, and I ask for a solution. Okay, I say, well, if everyone's stuck in this, how do we get out of it? And in my um, imagery, I got the impression of, let's say, uh, I'll draw it up here. I got the impression of like a sun up here, okay, a bright sun. So there's seven planes to our system. This is the physical plane. This is more finer, subtle, more higher state of vibration. This is more dense. The physical is the dense and lowest, and the divine is the highest. So I got the impression in my little symbolic imagery of a sun, a vibrant sun on the highest plane of our system that we need to be aware of for the moment. And I thought, well, how's that gonna help? But if you imagine this as there's a bomb being dropped here, if you actually become aware of that sun, it's like you're lifting your consciousness out of the physical effect through the psychological storm cloud, and it's like raising above the clouds to connect with the sun, okay? So if you, if you as I'm talking this through, just visualize for me, if you like, this beautiful bright sun right way above the storm clouds. And that reminds me of a little channeling I watched um, not that long ago, it was, I think it was a channeling of Jesus speaking. And he used an analogy that there's two ways people can arrive, can escape the storm. So this is the storm clouds happening in a personality level. And you can imagine like a storm raging and the seas are rising and, and people are running around and buildings are getting collapsed and there's disaster everywhere. If your consciousness is stuck in that storm, it's going to be quite horrific. But he said there's two ways to escape the storm. One is you rise above. It's like you're, if you're an aeroplane and you fly above the clouds. If you imagine looking back down the world from up high, where the, it's really bright and it's sunny, and you can see the sun shining to, on the top of the clouds, and that sun, and when you're above the clouds and you look back through the clouds at the world below, you can see the storms and you can see them happening, but you're not caught in them. You rise above them. So when you rise above, it lifts your consciousness to a higher state of vibration. And just thinking about that, if you think of the sun shining high above all the stress, it's somewhat relieving just to think about it or meditate on it, okay? But sometimes, and a lot of people might be finding this, that a lot of like people who are, who are trying to help people and light workers and trying to help lift the consciousness of the planet, we're getting a little bit sucked into this psychological manipulation and game that's been played upon us, okay? And that's trying to push our energies down to keep us underneath the cloud. So I was talking to a friend earlier and she was saying that she's been trying to meditate to lift the awareness up to connect with the source, okay? To connect with that light. But she's finding that as you try and lift, you feel like there's this weight of suppression, this energy is pouring down on us. And it's hard to clear the head. The head gets all foggy because you could say that these clouds are rolling in. It's like the storm's rolling in around us. And the interesting thing is that if you're looking from this person, physical, if we're thinking of ourselves as a physical person on the planet trying to look up at something which is higher, we're actually looking from our physical selves, not from our real selves, okay? Because this is not who we are, this is just a part of us. So if you have trouble going up, you can actually go the other way. The other description of what you can do is if you're in the ocean and the ocean's raging, if you dive deeper in, go into yourself and deeper, to the bottom of the ocean, it's karma. The tides can rage and you're in a calm, peaceful state. So you can either go deeper in or you can rise up, but they're one in the same place because if I close this, this bubble in, if you like, like close it in at the edge, edges here, this is like the bubble of space, okay? Made up of lots of different vibrations. If you close it in and you go deeper in, let's say you go deeper this way, 
It's like you can go down and you can go around the edges of the problem and create an energy field that comes back around to the top like that. Okay, so if you are, if you go into the center of the planet, for example, the center of everyone's being is that divine light, is that source, it's the inner spark of health within us. So as you tap in and you go deeper within, you come, you go through all the muck and you go deeper into yourself and you feel, tune in and feel, it starts to connect you with a deeper source and that source is one with everything else. So it's almost like you imagine you're going, if this cloud of people trying to suppress us and keep us low, is trying to keep us in a physical state so that we start just behaving like sheep and we're running around in fear and that keeps our energy low that's trying to stop us from being our natural divine selves but as you come around here you connect with the sun now you imagine that you're standing well, it's like you're standing in the atmosphere of the, in, out in the solar system and you imagine you're looking back from this light sun back down through your through the different layers down to the physical like you're looking down a tube a vortex and you're looking down and have a look imagine you're seeing your personality standing there down under the storm le cloud level and have a look and see how they feel how they're behaving so you could say this is the head of our divine self and the heart of our divine self is the intuitive so this is like the heart uh, okay let's see how I've got I hate it. I've never been a very good speller but heart right so you imagine that this is the head of our divine self, this is the heart of our divine self. See, our real self is basically a being with our um, legs and feet down in the personality. This is like the heart and this is the head, okay? So there's our real divine self. So when you look at, you look at, look at things from the perspective of we are, we are operational on all these levels, you start to see that this is who we really are. We operate on all levels. We're looking. We can't see ourselves from a lower element of ourselves. This is who we are looking back down. And then it feels like you're above the clouds. And when you're looking back down, you could almost imagine that this section here in a person is like the diaphragm. Okay? So the diaphragm in here. Now, when we're feeling anxious and restless and nervous and whatever, we're almost stuck in here. This is where our mental and emotional fears and anxieties play out. So many of you are probably feeling this gut-wrenching distress at having free will being oppressed and having no choice and feeling coerced and manipulated and bullied into doing whatever someone's belief is or ideal is to keep us in a state of control, okay? But when you're looking at it from above, you can, so it's almost like if you look at the world from up here, it's like nice and bright. And then if you look at the world from the perspective of the personality stuck in, under the storm clouds, all right, you can see that it doesn't look like a very good world. Okay? If you get stuck and caught up in this fear, and this is a perspective of the people that are operating from a purely intellectual perspective, they can't see all of this. Because in order to see the higher self, you have to rise up to it. Okay? If you operate from just here, the world according to the belief of the people governing the show the negative forces, if you like, would like to keep us down here in fear so that we, our, our intellect and our emotions are suppressed and we're easily controlled. Okay, so the if you rise above it, you can operate through it and work from above down. So this is, who we, this is the perspective you want to have. So it's a little bit like this. If I draw this over here, all right, so you've got, um, here's the person again, okay. And here's the heart, and here's your diaphragm. I'll, I'll rub that out a second for a second there so it's not in the way, okay? So we're sitting here in the world operating from this self and the storm clouds come rolling in, okay, from the sides. So what the forces are trying to do is they're trying to close you in and close that gap and keep you, keep your energy down here so that you can't connect with the heart and the head and rise above the conflict. But if, as you identify with this healthy self, it's a bit like you bring energy through and you widen the gap, you clear it, and then you start to radiate out like a sun. If you start to own your power and radiate out, these storm clouds can't get in, they have to disperse because they can't come where the light is, if that makes sense. So this is where we wanna be. And the reason a lot of us are feeling suppressed a little bit is because 
there's this every time there's new mandates and new level of restrictions and a new level of you, you could say uh, taking away our free will they're coming down heavily on the cycle they're playing a psychological warfare trying to keep you in a state of fear and to start and, and it's almost like they're telling us what to do so that the future we we have is the one they're telling us we're going to have okay but that's not the reality it's good to notice that but you want to operate from the reality of a higher perspective where you're staying in tune you're plugging into the heart so i think what humanity is going through is humanity is going through a wake-up period where we're moving from a three-dimensional awareness where we're stuck in conflict and drama and difficulty this is all the illusion and we're learning to open our hearts and operate from a more four or higher dimensional perspective because the heart is more an intuitive feeling state it's a state of knowing and when you're in a state of knowing this is what you might say this is who the true self is that's the true self and that's the not self and if you look at the immune system the immune system in our body is the mechanism we have to distinguish between true self and not self okay so not self is like pathogens viruses infection anything that doesn't belong to us and we tend to think of that on a very physical level as illness or infection but that that will apply psychologically as well because if you're allowing if we're allowing ourselves to be psychologically manipulated and abused by other people we're allowing pathogens into our psychological atmosphere and that psychological atmosphere gets confused and cloudy and we're getting told what to do and what to believe and that takes us out of our heart the heart of our divine self which knows what's healthy for us and what's right for us. Anything that brings us more in alignment is actually healthy for us. And anything which actually throws us more into confusion and chaos is actually not healthy for us. So health has got a lot to do with how you live your life. So you have to be spiritually, psychologically, energetically and physically in synchronicity and everything balanced. And if you are in balance, you'll be in sync with this. You'll have a good sense of identity. When negative forces try to impact on our real self, whether it's psychological, energetic or physical, you can say, hang on, this is not me. This is something in interfering with me because if I allow that in, that creates disease, okay? And that disease, is a, we feel it as dis-ease. It's not easy anymore. We're in a state of distress or disease or uh, um, dysfunction or illness, okay? So that's the idea. Um, and so the mandates that have been given and then the, the treatments we've been told to take, what I'm finding in patients, for example, is it's actually keeping your energies low. It actually interferes with your mechanism, which stops us from tuning back into a heart and operating from a higher perspective. Um, what else can I say about that? So the secret, again, is you rise up. The secret is to rise up, not to run away. Okay, so we can't run away. We're not going to be able to escape. I got told the message at the start, no physical means that people use will solve this problem because you can't use control, manipulation, materialism, deceit, lack of transparency, fear, to solve a problem that is fear and, and materialism. You can't use the same thing that caused the problem to solve the problem. So people have to rise up to a higher state of awareness. In this state of divine self, it's a bit like as you, as you tune into it, it parts the clouds, okay? And you start to come to a state of peace and balance inside where you're not affected. You can feel all the negative forces trying to close you in. But when you come back and own your center, you sort of get yourself in alignment, even in your body, and then you let it overflow to clear the, st to clear the storm, to clear the clouds. And that will disperse the clouds and it'll lift the vibration and people will be able to move forward and rise above their distress. So this is where we want to operate from. What else can I say about that? All right, so the point here is that there is, we're really in a battle between empowering and trusting ourselves and trusting our intuition and trusting our feeling, putting in sustainable things in the world or projects in the world which actually benefit one another. So there's more than enough resources in the world to share and to care and look after people. And all we've got to do is educate ourselves on how, who we are and how it works. We don't have to go without. We want a win-win philosophy. So when you're making decisions, the, 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 the end point of this is when you're making a decision about anything, you want to make sure that you're not operating from this uh, below the clouds, from a perspective where you're stuck in the difficulty. 
Think of this as a white rope dangling into the darkness, okay? When you find that connection, either by rising up or going deeper and around, it's like you're holding onto the rope. Now, as you start to climb the rope, so here's a little person climbing the rope, if you like, okay? Okay. As you're starting to climb the rope, you're starting to lift yourself out of the darkness and into a, above the cloud line into the light, okay? Now, these forces that are, that are trying to operate, this is like the mental and emotional atmosphere of the planet. And a lot of the medicines and toxins we're using in medicine, like in modern day medicine, I, I call this the bucket of the personality. Okay, so you've got a bucket with three different layers, and we've got a lot of gunk in there. There's health in there and there's muck in there, okay? So when you go and see a medical doctor and they find you that you're chemically or hormonally out of balance, they'll give you a medication to keep you balanced within that conflict. So in a sense, you could look at it psychologically like that. They're not really healing you because healing happens when you, it's like you find the hose of health. There's a hose of health, the light, and you pour in pure water, and that means the muck will come up and out. So as you allow your conflicts to come out of the bucket, you'll start to, if you pour more health in the bucket and practice healthy lifestyle choices, eat better, exercise, look after one another, it's about healthy relationships, that's the secret to life. You're starting to pour healing in, but the crap that we've accumulated over the years from old traumas, past um, abuses, psychological reaction to life situations and events, that starts to come up. So when difficult things start to come up to the consciousness, comes up to the brain, to consciousness and the mind, and no one wants to feel dis discomfort or uneasy or, or painful, so they feel this uneasiness coming up and they think, I don't like that. So they then try and suppress it and push it back under so they can go on believing that they're okay. But healing doesn't happen like that. Healing happens by, if you pour pouring in more health, perfection brings imperfection to the surface. If you pour in health, health starts to rise, uh, starts to fill you up and it brings up any stored blockages and problems from the past up to your awareness. Now the intellect, likes to try and justify everything. So when it comes up, I, I describe it like being an artist. You want to um, describe what's coming up and express it, but don't interpret it. Because when you interpret it, what the ego does is it puts a false judgment on that. It says, I don't feel like I'm feeling this way because of blah, 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 or I don't want to feel this way. Um, therefore, it's a, a, I don't want this, just get out. But it doesn't work. You have to describe it like an artist describing the feelings. If you describe them, they'll clear, they'll come through, they'll flush out so in other words as you pour healthy energy or water in flushes the muck up comes up to the consciousness comes up to the mind you realize it let it go and you end up clearing the issues out of the bucket so that's what i call taking responsibility so if we're going to heal as a race as, a, as individuals or as a collective race we've got to start taking responsibility for our own stuff and clearing the muck out of our buckets we can't just do a symptomatic treatment and just keep things pacified because if you ever wonder why do people get, as they get older and older and older, they end up with heart issues and neurological issues and uh, other organ related issues and back pain. It's because they're accumulating more and more stress over their whole lifetime and they're not learning how to get rid of the stress. Now, if you're in a state of disease, if you've filled your bucket up with 60, 70% of toxins, uh, psychological belief systems, which keep you trapped, emotions, which keep you trapped, all that you're actually diminishing the health in your body you're making yourself less healthy so when you get exposed to a disease you're less able to combat it because you have less of an identity of self versus not self but if you can imagine if you clear the muck out of the bucket and you get healthier over time and it does take time it's not going to happen straight away as you clear the muck out of the bucket you start to get healthier and the healthier you get the more light the more vitality the more sense of self you have the more you feel at peace spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically, and energetically. That means you're gonna have a healthy system, and your healthy system will combat illness to a far greater and more beneficial, in a beneficial way than any medicine will do. Medicines just keep you in a balanced state for a certain amount of time. It almost postpones healing, because if you're just trying to you know, get symptomatic relief and feel free of pain, but you haven't healed anything, then nothing, it's, you know, getting a medicine is not going to protect you. It's actually just going to keep you in a diseased state for longer. 
So ultimately you have to do the clearing work. But as you start rising up the rope, the darker forces will try and pull you down and you just have to hang on, hang, hold the line or hang on. And as you start to get clearer and clearer, you rise above it, you get higher and higher. Okay, And you get to the point where you're operating above the conflict and you can see clear, more clearly what's happening. And because you can see more clearly what's happening, you can combat it to disperse the clouds. So I find with healing, the first thing I always do when doing any healing work on people is teach them how to align themselves first, to get themselves balanced. And then I show people how to overflow that health onto others so that you're spreading health and ease rather than spreading fear and disease. Okay, so that's what you combat fear with love. You combat uh, anger and irritation with peace. So whatever you focus on or dwell upon is what you build and what you want to um, develop. So if I ask you this, do you want a future that's dictated by um, psychological um, mind control almost and suppression, which ends up meaning your, your rights and your free will and your empowerment is diminished? Or do you want a life where everyone is looked after and you look after, everyone shares the reason, you know, and overflows health onto other people? Health is just as catchy as disease. What determines whether you get healthier or more diseased is whether you build in more health or you build in more disease. So by all means, notice where the conflict is. You have to notice where it is and where it's coming from to combat it. But don't entertain it, don't give it any energy. Because if you don't give it energy, it can't, get, it can't attach, it can't get in to affect you. It can only win if you allow it to come in and manipulate your system to make you believe what it's trying to make you believe. So our immune systems don't just have a physical element to it, it has a psychological and a spiritual element to it as well. It's all tied in, it all interrelates. So the better you own your power, the less you can be dragged down, the less you will feed this storm cloud, the more you'll rise above the storm. And even if you get infection, you know, like a bug or a virus or a bacteria or a cold, you will flush it out and clear very quickly because your system's more or less healthy. You've got more percentage, high percentage of health in your system than disease. But if you're the other way around, you've been spending a life abusing the system, eating rubbishy food, not exercising, uh, not treating other people with loving kindness and respect, manipulating and bullying people, that doesn't ever end up very far, then you're end up, gonna end up fill up filling with more disease. So, and I'll give you an example to finish with. Let's say, I say to you, you know, you're a worthless human being. Okay, that's a lie. Okay, that's me telling you what I think of you, right? But because it's a lie, and if I keep telling people that, you're worthless, you're worthless, you're worthless, I'm separating. Eventually, someone's gonna come along and probably slap me around, give me a big wake up call, and I'm gonna end up in conflict because I'm not treating others with loving kindness and respect. But if I say that to you, and you say, that's not who I am, I'm a loving, kind, supporting person, then you're owning your power. You're saying, that's not me. You don't take it on board. It's just an opinion. And therefore you don't lose your power. But if you said, oh, maybe I am, maybe I am worthless and I am useless, then what you're doing is you're taking on someone else's belief about you and you will get diseased because you're not owning your power. You're actually taking on someone's faulty mental, it's like a mental virus that's plugged into your system and then made you believe that you're worthless, when in actual fact that's not the reality, because in reality we're all divine beings, all interconnected, and the whole goal and purpose of life is to relate to others with loving kindness. And if you go to any yoga book or any philosophy book or any book by any wise teacher or master or whoever, they'll always teach you basically, purify yourself first, get yourself in alignment, and then relate to others in a healthy way. So it's all about either help, how do you learn to heal yourself and how do you overflow that and relate to others. And as you do that and master life's challenges, you become more aware, more conscious, more empowered. And you know, because you're in your heart, you know, because you can feel it, what is good for you and what isn't. So if I go and eat rubbish because I'm aware of it, I can just think about the food and see if it's gonna help me or hinder me. And if, my, if I think about something and it makes my system feel more confined and more restricted and that's actually adding to the problem if 
I think about something which is good, to, good for me, food or emotions or thoughts or healthy philosophies, it actually helps to empower, it helps to connect and relate everything and everything to expand. So I'll leave you with that um, idea. But when you're meditating, try not to look at, look from these lower, try and imagine you're already perfect, you're already healthy, you're already in sync, and you're looking back down at your personalities, which is just your vehicle. Here's the head, here's the heart, and the personality is the vehicle that we're operating through life in. And you start to clear it and then overflow it onto others. Spread the health, not the disease. Anyway, I hope that's giving you some food for thought. I'll leave it there.